Hey, what's up? Sambit PhD here from actually Sambit here from Sambit PhD. So this video will be specifically covering different points on the M1 iPad Pro. So this is basically a comprehensive review of the M1 iPad Pro. Keeping in mind students like me, like you. Let's start with the favorite feature that I love the most, the camera. So I won't talk about the megapixel quality, blah, blah, blah. This will basically about the center stage, which is the brilliant feature they have given now. So basically what happens is like, it is like a 120 degree wide camera. So it has a very uh, large field of view. So a lot of things. Now you see this camera is cropping because I am captured like this and there's not that much background. But if you have a very high field of view, which is like 120 degree in this case, then it captures too much details around you. So what happens is because of that, when you move around, you'll be seeing now in the screen, then iPad Pro can, it seems like uh, the machine learning algorithm is tracking your face. So it seems like the camera is following you, just like you do in a DSLR or a motorized camera. Camera is following your face, camera is following you. It also works for multiple persons, even though I tried it at home with one. So you can see it works for two, three, any number of persons. Always the camera will try to bring you to the center of the screen by using this wide angle adjustment by cropping or zooming out, zooming in or moving up, down, left, right, which seems like it's panning, but basically it's the machine learning and the wide angle together. They play this magic. This works with FaceTime and also with Zoom. Recently, they also support Zoom for this. So this is very nice. And you know, like, the M1 chip makes every everything very very fast. Now in the camera there are different other features like augmented reality where you can scan your surroundings and maybe design your room or there I mean you can use the free clips app where you can see like how it is mapping the 3D mapping of the surrounding but there are other advantages like in IKEA uh, you can use that to place sofa in somewhere in your room and uh, suppose you are buying a house you can see how the furniture looks by using augmented reality by using this because it has the lidar scanner that you have in the iphone also so it has the lidar scanner and it can do all these ar things apart from that you can superimpose in augmented reality in a 3d space different emojis pictures text and the cool thing that i love about it is the transcription which you can see now of the audio okay. while you speak so it's recording will so be very useful i'll be see how i'm saying how's the live transcription is it good i think siri is giving a very good transcription do you get something let me make the camera straight okay okay now it will be better to read here yeah so let's see if you can see what the siri is reading do you think this video deserves good number of likes and subscribers? So you can use this really, really nicely if you want to make a recording with the live transcription. It's a bit delayed, I see. Yeah, it's, it's a bit delayed, it's a bit delayed. Anyway, it's fine. I like it, even though there is no speech to text transcription, which is accurate, but this is pretty good enough because um, I am also working my research is on speech transcription. So, yeah, I am satisfied with making short clips for Instagram and Twitter later in the future using this feature. Well, the touch experience with the 120 hertz display is simply sublime. Nothing to say. Uh, I just compare, I can compare it with my 90 hertz OnePlus 7T. So I just feel the speed. I cannot describe it. And there are different gestures and uh, you can do with your hand or maybe with Apple Pencil. You can see a short demo now. Okay, next, the important thing for students when they're attending lectures is to take good notes and maybe also record lectures and take notes. So for all these features, check out 
the different note taking opportunities that you have so in this demo i did not cover apple notes but if you see the new wwdc apple notes is getting a serious upgrade with different added benefits and features in the after the ipad os 15 so i think um maybe after that i'm going to use it maybe next year but for now i just stick with good notes and notability just check it out by the way these are paid apps uh, i think they are around nine or ten euros uh, you pay for notability and good notes then comes your video and photo editing i mean i always love lightroom so i am using it across many devices the laptop pc mac and now the ipad so because i have an adobe creative cloud subscription which with a student uh, i mean being in educational university in netherlands i get discount so i pay around 20 euros for everything all the adobe cloud which generally costs you like 280 or 290 euros you might have seen my expenses and savings video flashing on the screen where i explained all the details about it so yeah apart from photo editing i am very new to luma fusion so i bought a luma fusion subscription which was something like 32 euros and uh, the reason i bought it i wanted to try this touch based editing i've seen many videos and people praise it a lot like the touch based editing is the future and it will make editing video editing very very fast which i want to try it out so i want to try luma fusion and these are also paid apps i think it will be a game changer in the future recently if you don't know like before coming to Netherlands I was an avid painter I used to do oil pastel and uh, nice paintings using different uh, oil colors watercolor so all these things are now possible because of this wonderful Apple pencil the iPad and Procreate so I paid like 32 euros for Procreate but it was worth it I would say because I love the painting features uh, Ah, sorry, Luma Fusion was 32, so Procreate was 10 or 20 euros, I don't remember. But it was worth it, I would say, like, because I could do uh, all these digital paintings using different brushes, changing the opacity, uh, how deep I make the painting. So there will be a different review video on the painting later. And the best thing about the iPad is, like, it's only 470 gram if you buy the cellular version, which I bought for to try out 5G, even though I have not tried it out yet. So you can, I can buy an eSIM. Uh, I think 5G coming full-fledged, at least in Netherlands and India, it will be like 2022, not... Uh, so I would say like, even though I spend 170 euros extra, so the base model here for 128 GB is around 900 euros. And in India, I think it's around 72,000 rupees. And my parents bought the base version, 128 GB, 11 inch iPad Pro. They paid around uh, 68,000, 72 minus 4,000 by using some cards, some Amazon offer. So I think it is a good deal, even though it is expensive than other tablets, but the features that you get and the ecosystem, if you have any other Apple device, uh, which I realized after using the Mac last year in November. So it, it is very useful. So the non-cellular version is 466 gram and uh, if you upgrade for 256 GB which I did then you pay something like 1000 euro in Netherlands instead of 900 and if you buy again a uh, cellular version you pay 170 euros extra so I think it was like 1009 and 170 so it is like 1179 euros so yeah so that is what you would pay but i think you don't need the cellular version because trying out 5g in a phone is better than paying 170 for the ipad just for the cellular version i don't know why i paid it but i paid it just to try it out but yeah someday i'll try it. it's very portable and now you can see a short demo over the microphone 
the microphone, the sound. I really love the sound. They have these four speaker grills, two on each side. And uh, the quality of the sound, the bass that it has, I think it is pretty, pretty good. Even better than most laptops out there in that range. Top fair trade vanilla ice and a chocolate. An ode on cookie dough, undefeated to fear. Ben and Jerry's, peace, love, and cookie dough. Regarding the video, someone asked me a question, I think, uh, before I made this review, that how is the screen, because it still uses the LCD screen instead of LED, which is the 12.9 inches using, I'm using the 11 inch. So I would say like, uh, if I compare it to my OnePlus 70, which is the OLED, although it is a very small screen as compared to iPad 11 inch. So I find the color accuracy, especially I'm comparing color accuracy not while watching videos because while watching videos I don't notice that much difference. But while editing in Lightroom, I notice a lot of difference. Maybe it's because of the big screen I'm biased. But I see that the color accuracy is much, much better in this, even though it's LCD, which they claim the liquid retina display. Um, I find the color accuracy better than most of the laptop or maybe my OLED uh, OnePlus 70. I'm not an avid gamer, I don't have time. I feel like if I start gaming, I get sucked into the, it's kind of like addiction. So I don't uh, game like for last four or five years, I think I've not played that many games, but Apple is giving Apple Arcade, which is like a three month free subscription when I buy this new device. So that's why I said, why not try it out? And I played some car racing and maybe play out some concept games later, whatever is available for free in Arcade. I think I have it till August because I bought it in May. So yeah, I will try it out till August and then obviously I will cancel my subscription. I have no plans of paying for that because I'm not an avid gamer. But I would say one thing is that Maybe because of the M1 chip, uh, there is no lag while playing and uh, it was a very smooth experience. But I heard and I read in some blogs and forums that these apps are not yet made compatible with M1. By not compatible, I mean there are no issues that I saw, but some apps which use too much of your RAM, people said like they have a limit of 5 GB, which is still still same as the old uh, iPads, iPad Pros, because the new one now has a base model, everything has 8 GB RAM. So 128 GB or the 256 which I bought, it also has a 8 GB RAM. But these apps have not yet been given software updates so that they can utilize this maximum RAM. So people are complaining like, I will sell back my iPad Pro because I don't get that level of software to this crazy level, high level of hardware. But I think, um, I mean, obviously you should not buy something by relying on future software updates. But I still feel that um, I think Apple is going to give an update. And um, I, I mean, it's difficult to make an opinion, but I would say like, uh, I believe that they will give an update. But still, I would say if you are buying it as a new device, and if you think that because that is not causing any problem for me. And uh, if you export videos in Lima Fusion, then you will see like the, there were some comparison videos about video exporting and editing in Lightroom. So there is a notable difference in that department. But I think they will give update. Okay, now let's take you to a tour with this beautiful Apple accessories where you have this beautiful keyboard from Logitech. I did not want to pay like 330 euros, which is a huge amount of money for the Magic Keyboard, uh, which also doesn't give you a casing around the iPad, just like the Logitech. 
and uh, in logitech you have so many modes and there are many other features just see the see the demo uh, how the logitech keyboard is i think it is pretty good and the quality of the keyboard and you have this apple pencil and uh, Regarding the screen guard, so many people have this craze in, uh, in all these forums like Reddit and all that you should buy the paper like screen protector. I am not against the price but I read that paper like is like a matte screen protector and they say the main thing is that if you are drawing and writing notes then paper like will give you the maximum feeling because of the friction with the matte screen and you get a feeling of a paper but I don't agree with that because People say that, I mean, I'm not against it, but what I'm saying is I also need a good quality of video and image apart from the pencil experience. So for me, if it is a trade-off, then I would choose a good video and original picture because they say that it cripples, distorts the picture quality because of the matte screen. So I would go for a good picture, even though Apple Pencil, you don't get that authentic paper feeling because I did not find any problem. I just bought a some random from Amazon from random tempered glass screen protector and that works really well with the Apple Pencil. No lag, nothing. And I don't think that Apple Pencil is gliding, which people are saying like it's slipping. So yeah, the experience is good. You can you might have already seen the demo or you can see it. So I think you should not run after paper like if you want really a good quality video and image. By the way, you can use any Bluetooth mouse. I love this Logitech Pebble. So maybe I can also leave a links to all these products in the description below so that you can try them out. And thankfully, Apple has given a charger with a 20 watt charger. And uh, battery wise, I think if you see like my use, I think it was not bad. But uh, when I'm gaming or I mean, not as good as Mac Air, which you cannot expect also. I think it was hardly like seven, eight hours and maybe stretch to 10 if you only browse and this but i think on an average i saw like seven eight maybe i will try to post some screenshots depending on my usage uh, so i would say it's like in the mid middle range not that good not that bad and by the way you can uh, buy a very basic version maybe 128 GB or maybe 256 GB because you pay only 100 euros extra and then instead of buying that 1 TB or 2 TB and paying huge amount of money buy a 1 TB SSD of from Samsung which you can see uh, it is very cheap like I bought in Black Friday around 80 euros but you can buy it around 100 euros something like that and it is a 1 TB SSD with a Thunderbolt so you can connect this Thunderbolt and now luckily the Apple iPad Pro has a Thunderbolt, not the Lightning, the old shitty Lightning. So you can connect it and yeah, you can get access to this high speed and you can edit your videos, read files, copy files. It's very nice. I think you might already know about this mirroring, which is a very nice feature where you can uh, use your iPad Pro as an external screen. So you can basically have wirelessly two screens. Suppose I have my M1 MacBook Pro and the iPad Air. Then I can use both of them side by side wirelessly. So there's this very nice feature that I can wirelessly use your Mac to extend the screen in Mac on the iPad wirelessly. So just select here go to let me go again okay just select on the top go to screen mirroring then select display preferences and uh, then go to screen mirroring now this is airplay displays off so i switch it on to my ipad which is near me it's showing some with ipad okay 
now you immediately see the screen now let's drag something and work two screens at the same time this is so nice So now basically wirelessly I'm extending my Mac screen to MacBook Air screen to iPad Pro. So this is a nice feature that you can use your iPad whenever you are outside without relying on this kind of huge screens that I have for the big laptop. You can use it in the outside without any cables or any hassle. So now let me open maybe Safari. So far is much faster as compared to Chrome. Then drag it. It's halfway through. So let me make it full screen. Okay, now it's nice. So in Safari, I watch something on Apple. And here, maybe I take notes. Say, or maybe I read my emails. Well, I didn't set my email, so I don't read anything. So basically, you can do something here and you can open something here. It's like 600 grams, 500 or 600 grams. So in total, if you use the Logitech keyboard and the iPad Pro, so 1.1 kilos. So it becomes a bit heavy, but it gives you protection and nice affordances finally i would say it has a very responsive ui and now after update it has 14.6 operating system ipad os and with the 15 ipad os you might have seen already the wwdc which happened yesterday um i really love the facetime that they are going to give upgrade to facetime with all these cutting off ambient sounds and uh, sharing to your Android or Windows user. So basically FaceTime is opening up to all these OS operating systems. You can chat with anyone by sharing a link and watching videos together. There are a lot of many features on FaceTime, which I love dearly. And I think it will even make the iPad more productive and useful. And the Apple Notes, Apple Notes feature is really, really good. Really looking forward to the iPad OS 15 and uh, i'm planning to make some videos on the apps so if you have something specific in mind like maybe how to take good notes very fast using the ipad and these kind of videos so i'll be making some videos the more i try out uh, if you have something specific in mind then please do leave them in the comments below uh, and thank you for sh uh, watching this video don't forget to share the video hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to the channel and see you in the upcoming videos till then goodbye from netherlands peace